What's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be reviewing the Dodge Challenger Scat Pack Widebody. I'll be assessing this car across 8 categories including performance, fuel economy, utility and practicality, comfort, features, styling, value, and finally fun factor and intangibles. At the end, we'll add up the score and rate this car on a scale of whether you should absolutely do not buy or it's so awesome, you should buy it ASAP. The Challenger Scat Pack Widebody is a serious performance machine. At the heart of the beast is a 6.4 liter naturally aspirated pushrod engine. And with this engine, you get 485 horsepower and 475 torques. With a good launch, 0 to 60 will be in the low 4 second range and quarter mile times will be in the 12 second range. Top speed is over 170 miles an hour. Passing power is great. And the 8-speed transmission is a very willing companion. The paddle shifters work awesome and the shifts are lightning quick. You can also use an auto stick if you don't want to use the paddle shifters. And thankfully, the auto stick has the correct uh, motion where you have to push forward for a downshift and pull towards you for an upshift. With the wide body package, the Challenger sits on 20 by 11 wheels in 305 width tires with a 35 aspect ratio at all four corners. This setup yields some serious grip. You will have a really hard time to break traction on public roads. The rear end of this car has a clutch based LSD which helps a lot with traction. Highway on ramps and back roads are so much fun to tackle but the full limits of this car can only be realized on the track. Overall, with above average performance and handling, I rate this car a 4 out of 5 in the performance category. EPA fuel economy ratings are 15 miles per gallon for city, 24 for highway, and 18 combined. And we'd say that these are fairly accurate ratings. Around town, we average uh, in the mid to high teens. On highway sport mode, it gets down to the low 20s if we're averaging 70 to 80 miles an hour. If you're in normal mode with the MDS cylinder deactivation kicking in, you can average mid to high 20s. Fuel tank capacity, it's about 18.5 gallons. So the highway range gets to about 450 miles. So with that said, and with the uh, poor fuel economy in the 15 to 25 miles per gallon band, I rate this a 2.2 out of 5. The Challenger is surprisingly practical. For a two-door coupe, it's actually quite spacious. Shockingly, the interior volume is 94 cubic feet, which is the same as the Tesla Model S. So as, as for interior storage, that's also great. There's plenty of nooks and crannies to store things in. Got some in the door. But one thing that we definitely don't like is that there's really not a good place for a phone. I mean, even in the cup holders, this will easily just slide out during hard acceleration and uh, hard cornering. The uh, trunk is also massive at 16 cubic feet. Reach in is a bit difficult due to the lift over height, but it gets the job done. And uh, there's no spare tire, just an inflator kit, which gives you a little so hidden storage nook for nooks and crannies. Now, we'll do a luggage test to see how many carry-on size suitcases we can fit in the back. So, here we have our uh, suitcase placeholders, about carry-on sized. Let's see how many can fit.
So, so based on this, so about five, which is solid. And we still have a little bit of space in the sides for smaller bags. And yeah, that's, that's a good indicator for how much space this thing actually has, which is quite a bit. Considering that it's a two-door sports car that can fit four, even five people in a pinch with great trunk space to boot, I mean, a suitcase of person in a sports car, that's hard to beat. We give this thing for utility a three out of five. So, for a two-door sports car, the Challenger is surprisingly comfortable. The front bucket seats are uh, wide with good leg support and side bolstering. Back seat space is also great. I mean, I'm six foot two, and if I were to adjust the driver's seat to my position and hop in the back, I could sit just fine with, without my legs even touching the seat back. The wide body also comes with three mode adjustable suspension. And in street mode, the ride is smooth and won't, won't punish your back. The Challenger also comes with regular tires. No stiff run flat tires to ruin the ride. Considering it's a high performance sports coupe that you can still drive in comfort as your daily driver, we have to give it a three out of five. The Uconnect is a great, easy to use infotainment system and comes with CarPlay. There's a lot of customizable options, especially within the performance pages. For your performance pages, you have a lot of options to choose from. You have a 0 to 60 timer, a 0 to 100 timer, eighth of a mile timer, quarter mile timer, a braking distance, g-forces, peak g-forces, uh, lap timer, lap history, top speed. Um, so yeah, you got a lot of options here. And the best thing is, it keeps a record of everything, including your best ones. And then pretty much whatever you can customize in your main dash, you can also do on your uh, screen over here. All the different uh, options you have there, you have here as well. And on your home screen, the best part is you can kind of customize whatever you want. Here, I decided to just have horsepower, torque, current gear and my 0 to 60. It's so addicting in here just to always have this uh, 0 to 60 timer active whenever you come to a stoplight. Um, and when, as soon as it hits green, you basically have your own little timer ready to go all the time. Besides the home screen, you have a lot of other features and options that you can customize your performance pages with. Um, you can view your various timers, uh, different gauges that relay critical information such as your different temperatures. Um, that's always important to monitor, especially if you're going on a track, you want to make sure nothing overheats. So you have a lot of options here where you can you know, see it over time on a graph, and you can even export this data too, which is really cool. Uh, of course, you got your G-Force meter, your engine information, um, and oh yeah, overall, just so many different you know, settings you can customize. I really like this. There's also a valet mode, which will restrict the performance of the car for when you don't want anyone else messing with your Challenger. Oh, I didn't even know I had an eco mode. Holy. You also have line lock, which is a really easy way of making your car do burnouts on demand. Basically, it just locks up the front brakes and your rear wheels are just free to spin with as much power as you're willing to give them. Launch control is also really cool. It can really help you get those perfect starts without having to, you know, use your left foot to modulate the brake pedal. You'll just get a perfect launch every single time. The Plus package is also great to have as it gives you the nice stitched leather dash, more soft touch surfaces, and ventilated Alcantara seats. The ventilated and heated seats are extremely powerful, even in a low setting. 
a heated steering wheel is also standard. The driver convenience group is also a great option that bundles blind spot and rear cross path detection in HID headlights. With the limited visibility in the charger, these are two features that I absolutely love. I find the collision warning fairly useless. It rarely activates and similar systems from other brands are much more sensitive and accurate. Here, if you adjust the sensitivity between near or far, it really doesn't make a difference and it barely ever activates. We have lots of hard buttons here which make it easier to access all the information that you need to. A quick press here will get you to your drive modes. So you can choose between track, sport, custom and auto. Um, you know, you have your launch control button and just a lot of nice physical controls for temp, volume, tuning, etc. A lot of cars these days are moving all the controls to the screen which is annoying. Um, but it's nice that you have some hard uh, knobs here as well. And then this car actually does have um, active cruise control. Um, this platform came out a long time ago, since 2007, 2008 I think, but they've constantly been refreshing the Challenger all these years. And their ability to add new tech, new features is pretty uh, incredible. Um, the active cruise is really nice. The only thing is the active cruise and the Charger actually has full stop capability, which this car does not. I don't know why, it seems like it's gonna be the same system. Um, so some of the features you can get in the other dog products, um, including lane keeping assist, you don't get in the Challenger. Um, so that's just one thing to uh, keep in mind um, when you're shopping Challenger versus Charger or another Dodge product. Another interesting quirk is that you can get the Active Cruise in the SCAD pack, but you can't get it in the Hellcat, and I'll show you guys why. The Active Cruise sensor is actually mounted right up front here. And then in the Hellcat, you need all the airflow you can get through cooling capacity. So in order to have extra cooling, you won't have the sensor in the Hellcat models. So unfortunately, no active cruise. Overall, this is an ancient car by modern standards. But Dodge has kept it fresh with new tech and lots of fun features to play with throughout the years. Because of this, I rate this car a 3 out of 5. There's not much to say here, except that the Challenger looks awesome. You won't find many cars on the road today that have classic styling cues that are so faithful to the original model. It's a great looking muscle car and you know people still love it because nearly 15 years since its introduction, the Challenger has looked the same, yet they still sell in great numbers. There was a significant refresh in 2015, but it's still the same old Challenger. Also in wide body form, it simply looks amazing. The fender flares give it an aggressive look and there are no bad angles to this car. Driving around town, you'll get many compliments and thumbs up from fellow motorists. Overall, I give the styling a 4 out of 5. The Challenger comes in many different trim levels and you can pick one up for as low as 25k to as high as $100,000. The Scat Pack wide body starts in the low 40s but can be optioned up into the 50s. At 40k, this car represents a serious value. You won't find many other cars on the road that offer 485 horsepower in this level of performance for that amount of money. And for that reason, this car is a huge bargain and why it's so beloved across many enthusiast categories. Overall, for these reasons, I rate this car a 3 out of 5 for value. The Challenger really is one of a kind. It has a great mix of styling, performance, and practicality that you won't find in many other sports cars. The exhaust note is intoxicating and you just want to step on it all the time. And if you like to keep track of stats, the performance pages make every drive fun. You can fit your friends and family in this car and have plenty of space for a weekend trip. If you could only have one car and didn't want to compromise on performance, you could easily daily drive this. Overall, it's such a unique car that I give it a 3 out of 5 for fun factor and intangibles. Adding up the scores, we come to a total of 25 out of 40, which lands a Challenger in good car territory. It might not have all the modern features or fuel economy of some of its competitors, but that's not what makes this car special. This Challenger really is a unique experience. The V8 is slowly dying as more and more automakers begin to electrify their platforms, but the Challenger is one of the best holdouts and last ones. It's seriously a fun performance car for not much coin 
in one of my all-time favorite cars that you can currently buy. Thanks to Perry for featuring it in this video, and if you enjoyed this review, hit the like button and subscribe to Vix Vehicles. We're out.